Welcome to Tech Talk with Hughes Performance. My name is Pete Nichols. If this is your first time tuning in, please do us a favor and click on that subscribe button in your lower right-hand corner. Uh, give us a like, share our videos, uh, show your friends, family. You'd be doing us a huge favor and we'd really appreciate it. Today we're going to be concluding our Torque Converter 101 series. We have six other videos in this series that you can go back and watch. We have a playlist created on our YouTube channel where you can watch them individually. And uh, we do have another video we'll be doing in the future that's going to cover our drag radial and ProMod lockup torque converters. Uh, but that's going to be its own video rather than being part of the 101 series since it's a little more uh, advanced and for a much more specific demographic. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to properly install a torque converter into your transmission. We have a uh, display power light here. You can see it's cut away. You can see some of the internals here in one of our display converters that comes apart. So I'll walk you through proper installation on a converter. Uh, this is, tends to be a little bit of a problem for some folks who've never put a converter and transmission and engine together before because if you don't get the pump hub engaged with the pump gear properly, uh, you're going to end up damaging the pump gear, the pump, the converter. Uh, you're not going to have any drive motion in the transmission and uh, you basically just got to take everything apart and start all over again. So converter installation. Converter depth and engagement into the transmission pump and shaft assembly, very, very critical. Uh, this being a GM example, you can see we've got a slotted pump hub drive here on Fords and some Chryslers. You'll have machined flats on each side instead of the milled slot. Uh, some Chryslers also have a milled slot, some Fords also have a milled slot. Regardless of which style of hub you have, uh, the steps outlined here are going to apply to ensure that you have a properly seated torque converter into the front pump before you go and made everything together on your engine. So if you go back to our very first episode in our 101 series, we do talk some about a converter hub and about the pump. We have a pump body out. You can see the uh, seal, the bushing, the pump gear, everything all in an exploded form. So you can kind of see how everything mates together. So obviously, when you're starting to install a converter, uh, you know, this is going to be a welded or bolt together assembly. But for the video purposes, I'm going to install each individual component into the transmission so you can see exactly what's going on. When you're getting ready to install your converter, we generally recommend that you prime the converter with some automatic transmission fluid. Uh, we do have our very own Hughes Performance Extreme Synthetic Racing Type F formula that we like to use with all our products. We have that readily available under part number HP400 in three gallon case quantities or part number HP401 in individual gallon quantities. That fluid will blend with just about anything out there. If you already have some fluid in your transmission and you're just swapping converters, uh, if you're doing a fresh fill and you have our products, definitely use our fluid. It's a really good premium fluid and it works in all of our competitors' products as well. So moving into the install, we're going to take the impeller, or if you go back to video one, what's also referred to as the pump. Your pump hub is going to engage the seal, bushing, and pump gear assembly here. So it's going to slide over the input shaft, over the pump stator. We've got it into the seal. You're going to have to rotate the converter as you're applying forward pressure to get it through the bushing. There it goes through the bushing. And then it's going to engage the pump gear. Uh, there's drive teeth on the inner pump gear that the hub engages. And you'll feel it. And it'll move forward. And there it goes. So you're going to get a distinct click or clunk that you can hear or feel as you're pushing the converter in. It just takes gentle pressure as you're turning. Once the converter's in, you should be able to freely turn it, and you're actually turning the pump gears in the pump assembly when you do that. The next component that engages the pump assembly inside your torque converter is the stator. You can see we've got a spline hub inside here, and that spline matches the spline on the stator tube. So when you're installing that converter, you're going to feel that spline engage, and again, you'll usually hear or feel a distinct click or clunk. You can see we've got that stator fully seated in there. 
Then the final component that is engaging your transmission assembly when you're installing a converter is the turbine. We have the turbine hub here. Again, it's a spline element. And that's what drives your input shaft. So when you're installing that converter assembly, you're gonna engage the spline and it'll slide on there. And again, you'll usually get a, either a, a clunk or a click where you hear it and feel it engage. And that's a good example, if you've seen me struggle there, of how sometimes a converter can actually fight you on the install. It's not that there's anything wrong with the converter, it's not that there's anything wrong with your transmission, but you do have very close tolerance parts here, the spline on the input shaft and the spline on the turbine hub. You're only dealing typically one to two thousandths of clearance between the components. That's a very fine fit. It's not a tight fit, it's a slip fit, so you should never have to press or beat a converter on. If the converter flat out doesn't want to go, stop, because you might have an issue. Uh, but you can see there, it took a second to get that in there. Sometimes you got to work that converter around, spin it, applying light pressure. Sometimes it helps even if you tilt the transmission assembly up a little bit to give the converter a straighter shot, dropping down onto the pump. Obviously, you want a buddy handy to help stabilize the transmission if it takes that much effort to get the converter in. But again, it should eventually slide in. You shouldn't have any resistance to the converter engaging all three components, the pump gear, the pump stator tube, and the input shaft. Obviously, here we just have the converter drive cover. And this just slips on here. The converter is in. You're going to have threaded mounting pads. You're going to have studs sticking out if it's a Ford. That's obviously going to align with the bolt holes in the flex plate. You're then going to slide the converter forward. The crankshaft pilot on the converter is going to engage the female end of the crankshaft. The mounting pads should seat against the flex plate, flat and true. And then you can go ahead and put your fasteners in that physically hold the converter to the flex plate. And one of the key areas you want to look out for when you're sliding this converter forward is how much air gap you have between your mounting pads on the converter and between the flex plate mounting surface where the converter mates. You should have an air gap here on our products and most other products. You're typically going to observe anywhere from one eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch air gap before you slide the converter forward to meet the engine. This is ideal clearance. This is what you're shooting for. If you have less than an eighth of an inch, there's a little bit of wiggle room in there, but generally you're going to want that eighth of an inch pullout. Uh, you can run it as tight as 80 thousandths or 100 thousandths of an inch, but any tighter than that, and uh, you could end up having some issues with uh, thrust bearing wear in the engine, uh, that type of thing. If you have more than 3 sixteenths of an inch of air gap, you're going to want to use a good premium hardened flat washer between the converter mounting face and between the flex plate that helps you achieve your proper air gap of one eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch. Perfectly acceptable to do that. It's not gonna compromise the strength of the joint between the converter and flex plate. We have drag racers that do it all the time, 2000 plus flywheel horsepower. They don't have converters working loose. They don't have bolts working loose. They aren't shearing bolts. It's not a problem if you do have to do a little bit of shimming. Once you have that eighth inch to three sixteenths of an inch air gap verified, you're okay to go ahead and slide the converter forward, eliminating that air gap and attaching it to the flex plate. And that's really all there is to it. Everything should spin freely. This pilot should be firmly engaged inside the crankshaft pilot, and you're good to go. That's really all there is to installing a converter. If you follow those steps, you're going to have a trouble-free installation and bulletproof performance and function. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Do us a favor. Again, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share our videos.
Check us out on Facebook. We're uploading daily content. We're also active on Instagram. Our website, HughesPerformance.com, has our complete catalog listing of products on there. We've added over 1,300 new part numbers for 2019, and we're continuing to expand our product line as we research, develop, and refine uh, new components and existing components. I appreciate you tuning in. Check in with us next week for another episode. Thank you.